Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today we are exploring gaskets, what they're for, where they go, and whether or not uh, you want them on your drum. Are they screwing up the sound? Are they changing the sound? We're going to find out. There's lots of drums out there, and some of them have these little things, and some of them don't. In the case of, like, superphonics, new superphonics apparently do. Old ones definitely don't. And we're talking about gaskets. What a gasket is, is a little piece of plastic or rubber. This feels like plastic. I don't know what this is, but I think it's plastic. That goes in between the hardware on your shell and the shell itself. It acts as a little separator. Depending on who you talk to, they're for isolating the hardware from the shell or isolating the shell from the hardware or maybe just to make it so that the hardware doesn't press into the finish on your shell when it's tensioned down. And there are some very well-educated people who build drums and who know about drums who say that these are problematic and that what they amount to is basically kind of like wrapping your drum in muffler and inhibiting resonance of the shell or inhibiting resonance getting from the head through the lugs and then into the shell that way. This is a subtle thing for sure um, and it's not a thing that I've ever thought about. I've never added them or taken them away from a drum before so we decided that it would be a surprisingly labor-intensive process to remove all of the gaskets from a tom and from a snare drum um, on the familiar pearl kit here at the studio. Uh, tune the heads to the exact same pitches and see if they sounded any different under any or all of the mics that we have on the kit. So what we're doing today basically is just seeing if these gaskets actually do anything, is it worth thinking about, and uh, we're testing it out on this 5x14 and on this 9x12. So first we're going to go with the gaskets as the drums came from the factory. Let's see what they sound like. As expected, they sound like drums. They sound pretty good. They're kind of in the medium range, maybe a little bit on the high side for the snare. Um, I brought it down a little bit from where it was earlier uh, when I got here, and it's still kind of a little brisk, but definitely resonant, definitely sounds nice. And the tom pitched up a little bit higher than maybe sometimes we do because I wanted to get the shell moving. Um, if you've seen previous episodes, you know, the lower you go, the less likelihood there is of activating the shell because you need tension on the head to get it to speak to the shell and move it around. And so, now we're gonna take them all off. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, we got them all off. Uh, gosh. And there's two on each of these lugs too, so it's not just one screw, it's two screws per, but they're all off. Um, and we have tuned them up to the exact same pitch or as close as we could get within reason. And uh, yeah, here we go.
All right, interesting. Um, they do sound a little bit different, the tom less so, and the snare maybe a little bit more so. Um, and the thing that we noticed when we were analyzing this uh, earlier is that the effect of them being gone with the snare is different in different mics. Um, we sensed a little bit of a broader sound in the further mics, but then the more close mics sounded a little bit more choked, again, minuscule amounts. To my ear, the tom is basically the same. This amount of differential to me is what I consider or call like within the bounds of the tuning. Like if I wanted it a little bit broader, I could tune it a little bit broader. Um, the margin is very, very small. I do want to say if you're a builder or if you're a person who is thinking in terms of structurally how you want your drums to be, um, it is entirely possible that these particular drums with die cast hoops and not the thinnest shells in the world don't experience much of a difference. If you're using razor thin shells or possibly really thin metal shells, there's the possibility that there could be some difference here. Um, it's really hard to say and I think it is a one drum to the next kind of situation because you're also contending with um, not only uh, that they're there, but also how thick are they? How soft is that material? This material is very hard. Um, if it was softer rubber or like almost like a neoprene thing, I mean, who knows? It's really, really hard to say. I have managed to choke drums to a degree that I could hear just by putting the lugs on too tight. And I've also had a drum where it was acting weird because the lugs had gotten a little loose and I tightened them up and it changed the behavior. It could be the effect on the head, the hoop, the shell, who knows? I have no idea. But if you... Uh, are worried about this, um, this goes in the category of people who are concerned about tuning their kit to certain pitches and whether or not that matters. I don't think it matters a ton. If you're in a position where you can judge that it's different and you prefer to have them or not have them, choose your own adventure. But for these drums, for sure, the difference is definitely not dramatic enough to matter in, in, in our opinion here. Now, just to kind of drive that point home, back to back comparison. Here we go. Now, an important takeaway, almost a psychological takeaway from this that goes to a lot of stuff with instruments and particularly for me, drums at least, um, is that context is everything. And if you don't have an identical instrument without this one tiny change that you are considering making to it, next to it, tuned exactly the same with the exact same snare wires on a magical day when they actually sound exactly the same when all of those variables are set, um, it's highly unlikely that it's enough of a difference to actually be a concern. The thing is, if you have a point of comparison that you're concerned with getting to and something's in the way, okay. But, you know, if it's a drum that's working for you and sounding good, leave it alone. And if it's not working for you and sounding good, I think taking gaskets off is probably like the last thing I would do. Something similar to this that I've experienced is changing out um, snare mechanisms on drums because for me, I've actually noticed a sound difference with that. And there's some physics involved, the angle that the strings or straps hit, how far away it is from the rezo head, different things like that, that actually really changed the sound for me. But as far as gaskets go, I, I'm not sure that even if you had that direct comparison, it would be dramatic enough to matter. But again, I do want to say that if you are, if you're a builder and if you have made two identical drums and you're like the one without gaskets sounds better, that's just science and that's cool, you know, and, and to each their own for sure. And if one, someone was building me a drum and I, they asked me if I wanted them or not, I would tell them to do what they would normally do, whatever that is. There's one more thing that uh, is, a, is a physical structural thing that is extremely important um, and worth mentioning when it comes to gaskets and if you're considering taking them off of one of your drums. And that is understand that the height of your lug away from the shell, meaning, you know, where the screw is hitting into it is going to change if you take the gasket away and put the lug back on the drum because it's actually acting as a spacer that to some degree is aligning the lug itself with your hoop and 
if your lugs don't have swivelly receptors on them for uh, the tension rod, then you're changing the brake angle where the screw is actually going into the lug. If you have tube lugs, for instance, or something that's totally static like that, you can actually damage your drum. You can strip the screws. Um, you can you can cause problems. And I've had drums in the past where I had to put gaskets in because they were built in such a way where the shell was slightly undersized and the builder just was, you know, we're talking about a millimeter, maybe two, but that's enough to screw up that angle where the screw is entering the lug um, and cause some serious tuning problems and possibly cause um, a failure of some of the parts. And if you're dealing with a custom made drum or an older drum, uh, and you do end up wrecking one of those things, it might be extremely hard to find a replacement for it. So if your drum is functioning well and it has gaskets on it um, and you want to take them off, thing one is maybe just don't. And thing two is if you do do that, take one of them off and see, just look at the angle because the screws need to be going straight into the lug. And if they're not, if there's any friction going on in there, I mean, you could grease it up a lot, but it's just a really, really bad idea. So that about wraps it up. Um, if you have any questions about gaskets, always you can ask us in the comments. Um, we're always curious. But please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification button down there so you hear about our new videos. We are barreling into season three, and as you may have heard in previous videos, this is our first season that is funded entirely by our Patreon patrons. So please follow the link below, learn about it, contribute if you can. There's a lot of extra content on there and direct access to us if you have questions or if you're interested in certain topics or anything like that, that's the place to hit us up about those sorts of things. And it's really what's keeping us alive during this curious and interesting time. And we have a lot of things that we wanna make and that is what is going to make those things possible. Lots of things that people have asked for in particular that will be coming directly because of that support. Just to let the cat out of the bag, or one of them anyway, um, we have a monthly goal set for contributions from the Patreon that when we hit it for two consecutive months, we're going to release an exclusive series on there to the patrons only talking about symbols. We've been talking about this for technically years now, and uh, we've been kind of waiting for an opportunity where we had the time and the energy to generate this. And we are going to go... I feel safe to say further than anybody has on this subject because of the people that we have access to and the information um, that we have gleaned from talking to them. It's going to be heavy duty stuff. Some of it's going to be very technical and some of it's just going to be, you know, the art side of it. Um, and people have asked a lot about the symbols that we have here. Um, they will be featured as well. So if you're hoping to see any of that or have it happen at all, that's the way to do it. <laughs>